The final topic that we want to deal with in this tutorial is the topic of modules and namespaces. Python as such is organized with modules and packages. Um, some of them are also called libraries, but you do not need to worry about the differences right now. Um, that means that Python as such uh, has only limited functionality. But many people have written code that tackles certain challenges and that other can use because they have written this code as modules. So at the moment, it is very easy to think of modules as scripts that other people have written and um, that you can basically access through your Python distribution. We speak of packages when we have a collection of modules that are often used simultaneously and we will learn about examples later on, but the precise difference at the moment is not important. Just don't get confused if people use the words modules, packages, and libraries in some almost interchangeable way. Now let us consider all this via an example. As you already know, in, uh, in Python there is no operator for taking the square root. So if we want to take the square root of 8, we have to take 8 to the power of 0 0.5. It turns out that actually base Python, so Python without any module imported, cannot conduct a lot of mathematical um, operations. But there is a module called math that you can import and that provides you with a lot of variables and functions that have to do with math and that are very commonly used. Now to access this module math, you have to use the keyword import and then the name of the module, in this case math. Now you can access everything that is written in this module math by writing math dot and then the name of the function or the variable that you want to access in the so-called namespace of math. Um, namespaces are basically areas with um, variable definitions, so to speak. So your main, main namespace is here what the variable explorer actually tells you. Right now it's empty, but if we would, would have bound this result here to the name x, we would see that now in our namespace we have a self-defined association. There are also predefined associations in our namespace, but we do not need to care about that now. If we want to access an external namespace, we can do this with this syntax here. So if we want to access the namespace of the um, module math, we write math dot and then the name of the, uh, of the object in the math namespace that we want to access. What we want to access right now is the function sqrt, which takes the square root. Let's see if that works. It surely does. Now what Python has done here is it actually, it has looked into the namespace of math because we've written math dot and it looked in this namespace for the fun a function called sqrt. If we would have written only sqrt of 8, Python would not have known that it need needed to look in the namespace of math. Python would have looked in the base namespace of the base installation. But there, um, there is no function called sqrt, so Python throws an error and says the name sqrt is not defined. If you want to import something from a module, you can always do this by writing import the name of the module and then use the name of the module dot and the thing you want to use. It is usually good practice to um, put the import statements at the very beginning of your script so that you know all uh, about all the dependencies of the script. But there are also other, th uh, other ways actually to import elements of, uh, of a module. Um, so, for example, the math module also contains common definitions, like for example for P or the Eulerian number. So, this, this module math also contains many useful variable definitions, like for example of the number pi. We could access this definition by writing math.pi, execute this, and we see that this is now um, the, the number pi. If we want to use the number pi many, many times and we do not always write explicitly math.pi, we can also actually um, bring pi into our common, uh, into our main namespace by writing, by writing 
Now we can access pi directly without writing math dot before that. And we did, uh, and this uh, happens because with this command here, we've actually copied pi from the name, namespace of the math module to our main module. And this is indicated here by um, the fact that pi now also um, is, um, is visible in the variable explorer. There is also a command that you will sometimes see and this basically um, copies the whole namespace from the math module into our common namespace. This is something that you usually really shouldn't do because um, you lose track about where actually the function and variable definitions come from. Um, if you write math.py, it is very clear that pi comes from the namespace of math and there you do not need to search for a definition in your script. But if you use this notation here, all this get, gets blurred. So I would consider that actually very bad programming um, practice. So we shouldn't use it. The final thing I want to tell you about are um, aliases. So some modules are used very, used very frequently, but have somehow inconvenient names and some conventions have arisen. So for example, there is a very important module called NumPy. And this module allows you to carry out many mathematical operations very efficiently. Um, to avoid writing NumPy all the time, but also to avoid importing the whole namespace of NumPy, we can create an alias. And we can write import NumPy as NP. And this basically needs that we do not read, uh, have to write, for example, NumPy pong array if we want to access the um, the function array uh, or the class array in the NumPy module, but we can only we only need to write np.array. And this is quite useful. Um, the array is a certain data structure that is very useful. So for example, if we wanna, um, just to see an example, here we have defined an array x, and if we ask type Python about the type of X, we know uh, we, it actually informs us that it is an ND array and that this comes uh, from the, from the mod module NumPy. This idea of having modules is actually extremely successful. So there are thousands of modules available for Python. You might even write your own. And um, some of them um, are extremely useful and you will um, use them all the time because basically everybody can write new modules for, um, for Python, it is actually assured that Python as such never gets outdated. So for example, if there is some new fancy uh, tool in machine learning being developed, then after some times people will have written a module that actually make this tool available to everybody um, that, that uses Python. This is basically the beauty of open source languages such as Python, that it, they are really um, the product of the whole scientific community or the community of the people that use the programming language. And with these beautiful thoughts, I uh, would say we can uh, end this lesson and also come to the uh, conclusion of the introductory lectures.